Harris. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. It's a pleasure to follow the member for Luton South, for whom I'm full of admiration. When we first arrived in Parliament, I remember wondering whether any MP had fought, fought their first parliamentary seat so heavily pregnant. I don't think so, but I'd also like to congratulate the Honourable Member for Newcastle North for her work on this issue. She's absolutely right to highlight the issues which underpin this petition. Many of them have been drawn to my attention by an organisation in my constituency, Health Watch West Berkshire, and they touch on points including, I think most importantly, the challenges that new mothers had during the period of lockdown. And if you'll forgive me, I will define that as between March and July of 2020. Not being able to see close members of their family, not being able to meet up with their NCT groups if they were in one, not being able to go to a family or a children's centre. The support that we would wish for new mothers was not there. However, in my uh, speech, I'd like to confine myself to the proposal in this petition, which is the right to extend paid maternity leave by a further three months to enable bonding and social engaging with other parents and babies through baby groups. I am not going to support this petition. I'll set out why and I'll set out what else I think should be done. The first reason is that I'm not persuaded that this is the purpose of maternity leave. And to look at the statutory purpose, you do have to delve back into European law. The Pregnancy Workers Directive was what kicked the idea of maternity leave off in 1992. And the whole essence of that was about the well-being of the mother. It was about mandating member states to offer 14 weeks for the mother to make a physical recovery from childbirth. Now, in 2009, the European Union looked at it again, and they came up with very firm recommendations that member states should offer 18 weeks. In fact, they recommended 24. And what they said then was longer leave will have a positive impact on the mother's health. Our priority is to help women recover from giving birth and to create a solid relationship with her child. So maternity leave, very respectfully, does not and has never existed for wider develop developmental purposes. And I think we should be wary about asking for it to do so particularly in this country where women have a right, a statutory right, to 52 weeks of ordinary plus additional maternity leave. I fully accept the extreme limitations that were proposed by the lockdown, but the reality was that wouldn't have been the entirety of any woman's maternity leave. And to the extent that childcare provision and other services are still limited, I'm not persuaded that their offering will have radically changed if we were to extend by three months to Christmas or even into the new year. My, my other point is that I am very, very worried about mothers asking for a further three months maternity leave, knowing how vulnerable they are in the workplace. In my experience, and I used to be an employment barrister, employers would find that an onerous requirement. And whilst they may not make her redundant while she's on leave or even when she recently returns, if she is caught in a redundancy exercise, say at the back end of 2021, she will find it very difficult to establish causation in an employment tribunal, and I'm concerned about that. But what I do think the government should do, and the conclusion I reached after 10 years of practice, is that the way to protect and enhance and progress women in the workplace is to embed flexible working practices. We have seen through this crisis how productive and effective people can be through doing their jobs at home. We've seen men doing it for the first time in jobs they never would have thought they could do from home. And we have recalibrated our view of flexible working, which can also mean working reduced hours, flexi working, job shares. So my view is that the answer to this is not in extending statutory leave, but embedding statutory flexibility in the workplace.